Okay, good morning, everybody. Um, so we're going to pick up today again, talking about uh, um, uh, tangent bundles. And the idea today is we're going to try to uh, sort of bring down to um, uh, more concrete terms some of the things that we uh, talked a little bit about last time. But but <clears throat> maybe I'll just remind you what the uh, the picture here is, uh, so that we have uh, something in mind. So the idea is that we had a curve. Um, And uh, so we had, uh, so we talked about the notion of equivalence, uh, equivalence classes of curves. Um, and so I'm not, I'm not going to talk so much about that again, because that's the definition of tangent vectors. But we'll think about fixing a, a single curve and kind of trying to understand some of the things that we did uh, uh, last class. Um, so, uh, so, so remember the idea was that I may have maybe had two uh, charts. So I had maybe a, uh, let's call this, this chart U tilde, and let's call this chart U. And so we had a, a phi like so, and then a phi tilde like so, um, mapping into some Rn. Um, and so when we did that, we had curves down here, which we uh, were phi tilde composed with gamma, and then over here, uh, some other curve, and this was phi composed with gamma. And what we were really talking about last time when we talked about uh, um, uh, the tangent bundle being a manifold is we're really talking about uh, the overlap condition, but not the overlap condition um, um, for charts, but for charts for the tangent bundle. Okay, so here we had an overlap map, which was like so. Um, and then this induced for us an overlap map. So the overlap map uh, phi tilde composed with phi inverse uh, gave, sorry, for, uh, for M gave an overlap map and so we had an explicit formula for this that we worked out in the course of the proof um, uh, and that formula was uh, t phi tilde composed with t phi inverse okay um, and it took a point x v okay and so this was a point in phi of u cross Rn. And so the idea is, is that, you know, X is kind of the point in the manifold or the local representative of the point in the manifold, and V is the local representative of the tangent vector. Okay. Uh, and the, the formula we had for this was that, you know, in the X component, we just had the ordinary overlap map. Oh, sorry. And then in the velocity component, we had basically the derivative of the overlap map applied to the vector, uh, the velocity component. So it was D of phi tilde composed with the inverse of X applied to the vector V, okay? So what I wanna do today is really uh, uh, understand uh, um, what that formula looks like when you, and, and, to, and to really show you that this is, um, nothing exotic at all. Uh, it's really um, um, something very simple, just sort of dressed up in uh, um, slightly fancy language. Okay, so concretely, and so some of what we're going to do today is really introduce the language uh, for talking about these kinds of things. Okay, uh, so we have a manifold M with overlapping charts, just like in the picture above. Phi, uh, U phi and U tilde phi tilde. Okay, so we write coordinates in 
these charts. by um, x1 up to xn and x tilde 1 up to x tilde n. OK, so what do I mean when I sort of say this language? Um, we write coordinates. Well, um, what I mean is these. Uh, um, these are the names of the coordinates. Okay, so uh, so for example, uh, we may have x one, x two equals x y, uh, and these might be Cartesian coordinates for the for R two. Okay, uh, and x tilde one, x tilde two uh, equals r theta. Okay, and these are polar coordinates for r two. Okay, um, and so the point is, is that these are just names for the coordinates, okay? Um, uh, uh, and, and, and what we're going to do is we're going to sort of understand um, uh, how things transform when you go from, say, x coordinates to x tilde coordinates. And we don't have that many things to talk about right now. We haven't introduced that many things, but we did introduce one thing, and that's a tangent vector. So let's see how, uh, well, we know how ta tangent vectors kind of transform when we change coordinates, that's the whole point of this overlap condition. But we're going to kind of express that now in sort of more concrete terms in terms of these coordinates x and x tilde. Okay. Um, so the overlap map expresses uh, x tilde j as a function of um, x1 up to xn. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Uh, what I mean by that is that uh, we can think of um, phi tilde composed with phi inverse. Okay, so that's going to take these um, coordinates that I named x up here, okay, and it's going to give the expressions for uh, the x tildes in terms of the x's. That, that's what the overlap map does, right? So for um, polar coordinates and Cartesian coordinates, it's going to give r and theta as a function of x and y, okay? And so this is going to look like this, is the point. Okay. All right. Um, and so, uh, so this gives us sort of, uh, uh, so now these are simple things. These are just you know, real functions of real variables. Okay. So in this case, oh, so sorry, there's one thing I want to, uh, uh, actually I'll, I'll carry on a little bit further before I, uh, before I mention this. Okay, so in this case, um, we have the following relationship between um, coordinates for the tangent bundle. Okay, so the coordinates um, x and x tilde for m just by what we saw up here. So this up here, this was uh, x tilde v tilde, okay? And so this is just expressing x tilde and v tilde in terms of 
x and v, okay? All right, and so the coordinates for uh, the tangent bundle are, we'll write those as, and so I'll, I'll write this out in sort of full detail uh, uh, here. Okay, so you have the untilted coordinates for uh, TM, okay, so um, X's and V's, and then of course you have the tilted coordinates for TM, and those are of course X tilde and V tilde. Okay, and what I want to do is I want to express these, um, you know, we know what the relationship is, that's it right there. Okay, um, but what I want to do is I want to express that in sort of this, uh, you know, kind of more concrete function of a real variable way, uh, where things are, uh, you know, kind of resemble something simple. Um, and so we still are going to have uh, uh, the x tildes are still going to be related to the x's by that formula, so that's still true, so it's going to be still um, x tilde j is equal to x tilde j of um, x1 up to xn, okay? And then v tilde j, okay? And so what's the formula here? Well, the formula here is the Jacobian, right? So v tilde is related to v by the Jacobian. Um, and what's the Jacobian? Well, the Jacobian is the Jacobian of the overlap map. Okay, and what's the overlap map? Well, the overlap map is just expressing x tilde, um, x tilde in terms of x. Okay, so it's this this thing is really, as, as we've already seen, uh, this is really just expressing x tilde as a function of x, and this is expressing the derivative of x tilde as a function of x. And so the point is, um, you're going to get derivatives. Okay, so you're going to get uh, d x, and so let me write it up kind of properly, and then I'll introduce some shorthand that I'm going to. I'm going to use when we write expressions like this. Okay, so it's the sum k equals one to n d x tilde j by d x k, um, and then we, this is evaluated at x one up through x n, um, and then you're going to multiply that by the vector v. Okay, and so this thing. This um, um, that thing is really just the uh, a component form of d phi tilde composed with the inverse of x applied to v. Okay. Right, but, but sometimes it's easier to work with uh, um, uh, an expression like this rather than an expression like this. It's, it's, a, it's a question of taste in some sense, but uh, um, uh, this uh, kind of more concrete um, looking thing can be sometimes uh, uh, easier to work with. Okay, now um, a notational device. Okay, so there's a notational device that we're going to use for writing formulas like this. Okay, and what we're going to see is, is there, there will be a proliferation of summation signs. And so what we're going to do is we're going to introduce some rules uh, uh, which will allow you to write expressions uh, like this, but it'll eliminate all the summation signs. Okay, and, and so you need some, some rules for how to do that, and that's what's uh, known as the uh, Einstein summation convention. Okay, and it's named after Einstein, the physicist of some note. Okay, um, and so uh, there's, it, this consists of a bunch of rules, uh, uh, and the easiest way to understand the Einstein summation convention is just to use it. Uh, but we'll write down what what the rules are, um, um, and and we will also use it. And by doing that, um, 
it sort of becomes second nature after a while. Okay, so the first thing is is that uh, coordinates. are indexed with superscripts. So you will have noticed um, up here, when I wrote my uh, coordinates for uh, and initially for M, um, uh, my X's and my X tilde's, I use superscripts and not subscripts. OK, um, if there's a choice you make at the beginning, um, and uh, I don't actually know this for sure, but my assumption is that Einstein chose superscripts. OK, but in any case, superscripts. Um, OK, so what's the summation part of this? Well, as, so as I say, uh, the summation is designed uh, to get rid of exactly a summation sign like this. And what features of this formula might allow us to do that? Well, what we see, and, and this is typically what happens when you work with these kinds of coordinate formulas in differential geometry, is that the things that you're summing over, which in this case are k, they appear repeated. There's a K here and a K here, and you're summing over K. And then there's a free index, which is J, uh, on each side. OK? So any index which appears twice uh, um, is assumed to be summed over. Okay, so uh, it, what do I mean by that? So for example, um, we would write this expression, which we just saw above. We would simply just write that like this. Okay, and the summation uh, is implied over k because it's repeated. Okay. All right, now there's some. Uh, so these are the basic mechanics of, of this. So there's some rules for using the summation convention, which will prevent you from uh, making errors. Okay, so uh, let me list some of those rules. Okay, um, summation shall occur over um, a repeated index. And so by a repeated index, I, I, I mean like this, okay, one that appears uh, twice. Okay, only when one is a superscript and one is a subscript. Okay, so the first thing that the astute among you will observe is that I violated my own rule. Okay, because the, the K here that I'm summing over is the superscript in both places. Okay, so that induces me to rule four, which is that a superscript in a denominator Okay, as in a partial derivative, um, is a subscript. Uh, so, yeah, is a subscript. Yes. Okay. All right. So these kind of seem like random, crazy rules that could not possibly uh, reflect anything real. Um, uh, but the fact of the matter is, is that if you uh, oh, and so there's one more rule that I'll mention here. Okay. Um, and this is kind of the one that requires the most attention uh, when you use this in practice. And we'll see this come up when we start doing uh, uh, computations with indices, as we're going to start doing soon. 
Okay, and that is uh, no index shall appear more than twice. All right, and so I, again, the best way to see this is through an example, and we will get to examples where this comes up, uh, but for now, we'll just write it down. Okay, and the point is is that if you adhere to these rules, um, it kind of will prevent you, it'll, it'll allow you to do computations in a compact sort of a way uh, without making any mistakes, okay? All right. Um, okay, uh, uh, so um, what we will do now is, um, actually, yeah, okay. Right. So let's let's do this. Let's talk about a physical interpretation of overlap condition. For tangent levels. Oops. All right. <clears throat> okay, because this condition, um, this condition uh, is kind of an obvious condition. And, and many of these kinds of conditions that are, or kind of formulae that we're going to develop over the next uh, few weeks, they're really just the chain rule. OK, and this condition I'm going to show you is really just the chain rule. All right. So let's see exactly why that's the chain rule. OK, so tangent vectors, remember, are tangent vectors to curves. When we defined the very notion of a tangent vector, it's an equivalence class of curves. And so tangent vectors, the way we talk about them here, uh, are, have, are, are, have their most natural origin uh, uh, thinking about curves. All right. So let's do that. OK. So let M be a manifold. Let gamma be a curve. And let U phi um, U tilde phi tilde be overlapping charts. Okay, so the picture here is uh, this picture that we had at the beginning of the class, right? Um, and so all I'm going to do now is kind of write down some, you know, versions of the formulae that we see in this picture, namely these two things here, um, and how they're related. Uh, uh, but now using our kind of uh, uh, component notation in coordinates, okay? All right. So uh, the local representatives. All right, so we talked about mappings between manifolds and we talked about local representatives. All right, so this is a local representatives, uh, uh, representative for the curve gamma, which is after all just a mapping. Okay, and so that's gonna be phi composed with gamma of T. Okay, and we're just gonna write this in kind of the way that you would write it in life, uh, which is that you would express the coordinates, uh, X in this case, as functions of T. And similarly for the tilde coordinates. Okay. Okay, so then um, the velocity along gamma. is uh, defined in coordinates by uh, 
by Okay, um, so uh, again, uh, in this uh, uh, picture up here, remember how we did this is um, we represented a tangent vector here by writing it down here, and then the and then the velocity down here was uh, okay, the, just simply um, the derivative. Okay, um, and so that's what I'm going to do now. Except again, I'm going to be using my component notation for my coordinates. Um, um, like so, okay? And so this is going to be um, uh, T maps to, okay? And so now the velocity along the curve, so at every time T, it's going to give me the tangent vector to the curve. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to write down the uh, uh, components of the, the coordinate representation, representation of the tangent vector, okay? So I have one in the untilted coordinates and one in the tilted coordinates. So I'm gonna do this kind of laboriously. And so what's the, uh, the, what are the Vs? Well, because I'm talking about a concrete curve, um, um, like so, okay? Uh, the tangent vector is really, tangent vector to the curve is literally just the time derivative, right? Velocity is the time derivative of position. And so this is gonna be x1 dot of t, um, xn dot of t, um, and similarly, in the untilted coordinates, you're going to have uh, x tilde one of t, x tilde n of t, uh, x tilde dot one of t, x tilde n dot. Uh, and I think I'm missing a parenthesis there. Okay. Right, so these are the two different um, uh, representations of the velocity along the curve. Um, in two different coordinate charts, okay? All right, so what I'm uh, heading for here uh, is, again, is, is trying to sort of see that this actually is a very, very simple uh, and, and natural relationship uh, if we think about V as being velocity, and, and that's kind of the whole point of this, okay? So then, we have, okay, so I want to relate then x tilde dot with x dot, okay, so x tilde dot j of t, well, so first of all, let me just sort of, you know, dot is time derivative, of course, Okay, how would you do that? Well, um, so what we're gonna do when we do this is we're gonna go D and we're gonna keep note of the fact uh, that um, X tilde uh, is a function of X. That's what, what the overlap condition gives us. And remember, we're trying to relate um, X tilde dot to X dot. And uh, so we, we just, we take explicit notice of the fact that X J is a function of X one up to uh, X N. And so maybe let me make it even more clear, uh, well, hopefully more clear by also keeping in mind that the X's depend on T. Okay, so now what would you do? 
how do you differentiate an expression that looks like this? And so I have x tilde as a function of x as a function of t. To, to differentiate it, you chain rule. Chain rule, thank you. Okay. And so you differentiate um, uh, uh, x tilde with uh, x tilde with respect to x, and then you differentiate x with respect to t. Okay, that's the chain rule in this case. So it's d, oops, what was that? Um, okay, uh, so it's uh, partial derivatives now because uh, xj tilde depends on all of the uh, x, uh, uh, x1 up to xn. So it's d, um, x tilde j by d, x k then it's d x k by d t and yes there's an there's a summation there all right and so i'm using the summation convention here all right and so may, maybe because this is the first time i'm writing this down i apologize uh, let me uh, um, put in the arguments here just so it's clear how the chain rule is being used so here this is being evaluated at x one of t up through xn of t. Normally, I, when I do these computations, I do not include the arguments here, um, but I'll do it, like I said, because this is the first time I'm doing the calculation. Like so, okay? And, and so, like I said, in real life, the way I would write this is I would just write uh, dx tilde j by dx k x dot k. Okay. Um, and, you know, typically I, I also would not include the T there as well. Okay. Okay. And so you see that this, uh, this overlap condition, uh, the point is overlap condition for TM is the chain rule. And so many things uh, that we're going to be talking about in the next little while are really just the chain rule, okay? All right, um, so now uh, what we do is uh, um, uh, we take a long excursion uh, into linear algebra. And I'm not gonna really be introducing you to any um, linear algebra that you haven't seen before, uh, but I'm going to be uh, uh, doing it a little bit differently and introducing different kind of notation for talking about it. And the notation is going to be a notation which is really adapted to uh, uh, the Einstein's summation convention. Okay, so it's really going to be visiting um, a lot of things that you already know about, a couple of things that you don't, well, that you know about, but never really thought to maybe um, think of them in a special way, uh, uh, and, and then notation for talking about those things. All right, so this is going to be a linear algebra excursion. And like all good excursions, it's going to be long. Okay. All right, so um, let's let V be a finite dimensional real vector space. Okay. Um, so, you know, the, the simplest kind of abstract vector space that, you, uh, that you've dealt with in your life so far. Okay. So finite dimensional real scalars. All right. <clears throat> um, let E1 up through En be a basis. For V. Okay, so this means you'll remember that uh, those vectors uh, E are linearly independent and that every vector in V is a linear combination. So they uh, span, uh, they span V, okay. Um, and so you'll notice here that I'm employing my summation convention. So here, when I wrote uh, um, 
coordinates, right? I wrote coordinates with superscripts. Well, um, I apologize. I have this backwards. Um, so my dyslexia comes back to me. Uh, these should be um, subscripts, apologies. And we'll see why they should be subscripts in a second and why um, that is actually consistent with the summation convention. Um, okay. Um, so therefore, given a vector v in v, we can write v is, well, the definition of being a basis is that v is a linear combination of basis vectors. And so what that means is that we can write v as a linear combination of basis vectors. And the components in the linear combination, I'm going to call v. Um, and now I'll use the summation convention uh, like so. OK, and use, as I was about to say incorrectly before, um, this is consistent with the summation convention we had before because we wrote the coordinates uh, uh, x as superscripts and here we're writing the components of vector of a vector with uh, uh, with superscripts and that requires therefore that the bases uh, the basis vectors for v have subscripts um, uh, uh, to index them okay all right um, so now Now I'm going to talk about linear maps. Okay, so I'm going to talk about linear maps between uh, different uh, vector spaces, U and V. Okay, and we're going to denote by L of U, V, the set of linear maps. Um, from U to V, okay? Now, um, uh, if I give you, uh, I, I have a basis for V, I'm also going to take a basis for uh, U, and as soon as you have bases for the two vector spaces in your space of linear maps, this gives you a way of representing linear maps by matrices, okay? Mm -hmm. So if F1 up through Fm, okay? So evidently the dimension of V is N and the dimension of U is M. Okay, so if Fs are a basis for U, um, then associated, to a linear map, let's say L, between U and V is a matrix. And I'm going to denote this matrix by square brackets L. OK. And uh, we should think about what is uh, the shape of this matrix, OK? So L is a linear map from uh, uh, an M dimensional vector space U to an N dimensional vector space V. Uh, and so therefore, um, uh, this matrix will have N rows, OK? So it'll have the row uh, dimension will be the dimension of V, and the column dimension will be the dimension of U, OK? And so this is going to be um, R N by M. Okay, so an N by M matrix. Okay. Okay, so this matrix is going to have some components. Okay, and I'm going to write these components in a specific kind of a way. Um, 
with using superscripts and subscripts. Okay, um, and the way I'm going to do this is uh, so the um, nothing really happens with the first one. It's one one, so there's no confusion about which is a superscript and which is a subscript. But then, as you start going across. Um, then you're increasing the column index. Um, and so that means uh, that it turns out that the way we're going to do things, uh, the way you do that is you uh, do it like this. Oops. Um, you go L12, L1M. OK. Uh, the row index is the superscript, and the column index is the subscript. OK. And so L21, uh, L22, L2M, LN1, LN2, LNM. All right, that's how we write that matrix. And how is it defined? Okay. Um, well, how do you define the matrix associated with a linear map? Well, remember the way you do that is you take L and you act on a basis vector. Okay. So in this case, L is a linear map from U uh, into V. And so a basis vector will be one of these Fs. Okay. So it's going to be F. Uh, let's say a. Let's use the index a for the um, for going between one and m, and we're going to use an index j going from one to n. Okay. Now the rule for defining uh, the components is we notice that, that this thing necessarily is a vector in v, right? Uh, L is a linear map from u to v, so this will be a vector in v. Therefore, this will be a linear combination of uh, e's, okay? So it's going to be some linear combination of, um, of e's. Um, like that, okay? Um, then you just need to, you know, um, the coefficients of the linear combination need to be placed in front of the, uh, uh, the E, and the coefficients are, we'll call those L, J, A, right? And so we're using summation convention here, so we're going to write this just like this, okay? Right, and so that's this the, the summation convention uh, has to apply here, and so I'm going to use my rule where I'm only allowed to sum over superscripts and subscripts, and so that's what dictates uh, um, uh, in the matrix the one is the row index. Uh, sorry, the superscript is the row index, and the subscript is the column index. Okay. All right, so that's that's what a matrix looks like. All right. Um, so then what we'll do, and I won't have time to do it today, so I'll finish a little bit early, um, is we're going to um, look at, again, it's a thing that you're utterly familiar with, uh, but we're just going to look at it in a slightly different way using slightly different notation. Um, We're going to look at the change of basis formula. And um, so this is kind of going to be the linear algebra version of what we've been doing with manifolds. So with manifolds, we've been talking a lot about changes of coordinates, right? Overlapping charts and how things go from one chart to the other chart. So what we're going to do next time is we're going to uh, uh, do the same kinds of things, but with linear algebra. And then after doing some linear algebra, we're going to go back um, uh, to manifolds again. Um, um, so actually, that'll finish uh, us off for today, um, and uh, so I'll see you uh, uh, see you tomorrow at eight thirty.